Hello and welcome to another tour by Hawaiian Shirt Papa. This one is of the Journey Thrift. It's located in downtown Brampton. Not Bremily, Brampton, the original town. And uh, they seem to be collecting quite a bit of stuff, so they're limiting those. At least they were when I did the tour. Their official parking is across the street. There's a number of parking spots there. But uh, there's, uh, there was space be beside the building, probably not their own space, but whatever was there was demolished at the time we were there. So it's, it may not be possible to park on where I'm taking the photo from. They have a little sandwich board sign on the street. Their hours are okay. Um, closing at five uh, has to do with being volunteer operated then. And here's the full front of it again from a different view. The door set in, which is not terrible, it's pretty good. Their hours and the sign and so on and so forth are here as well. Come vicariously tour thrift stores and antique shops with Hawaiian Shirt Papa. But here the hours read slightly differently. They have a, a later evening on Fridays. I'm not sure which one to actually follow. Uh, your experience will tell you. But uh, just inside the door they have a uh, a breezeway and it's got the community bulletin board. They are community based. Uh, they're trying to help those who need the help within the community that they're in. And they're looking at specific neighborhoods primarily. documents that they have that you can grab. That is uh, behind glass there. And now we're inside. The front showcase window, there are actually two different sides. There's a wall in between the two. So this is pretty well the entry area and it has some coats right away. And then they have the uh, little collectible statuary. Oh, I have some stills of some of this stuff coming up. The, uh, the wooden little schnapps kind of setup. Not terrible price. It wasn't, it wasn't particularly great either. There's limited demand for those. Some folks love them, some they just sit and collect dust so they get rid of them. Chess sets, uh, some other interesting baubles here. Some in colored glass, if you're into the red color, they had a reasonably good collection. Red glass is generally made at least in the past, it needed gold, so it was tended to be a little more expensive. Here's the one of the first items that I've taken the time to give you a good view of it. A da vintage Danish hot toddy cups. Well, when it says there's a set of four with spares, that sounds like two, two of the glass components broke and they're just giving you all the, all the bits and pieces. The Federal Milk Glass set of three plates with cups, so it's six pieces. These are usually referred to as luncheon sets. Mm. Not a great price. Um, maybe a little on the higher side, but hey, 
if you're right there and that saves you having to drive somewhere else, then it's not a bad deal. And we have these uh, uh, drink sets. Let's call them that. Uh, here's another view of the red glass and the blue glass and a few of the other things that were on the same shelf. Odds are that it, when you see this, mm -hmm. very little of this will still be there. But it gives you a feel of the kind of items that they will uh, offer to for sale within the store. Some of the toys, little cars. I don't know if that's such a good idea to put the sticker right on the top of it. Because some of the some of the stickers will remove finishes from from what they're stuck onto. The, the glue can be a little too aggressive. So they had some framed art, not only in this way of displaying, but they also had some in a in a down below where you can just flip them over, flip them forward. Some more of the uh, shelves that we were looking at earlier. This is a bit closer on one of them. It's got the interesting characters. Can't remember what these wooden things were, or maybe I didn't figure out what they were, but give you a good look they kind of look like they were something that was used with horses so you could hook up two horses or ponies to pull on some central object that was a cash area where they had some of the jewelry in the in the glass case and then beside it they had the the purses i guess they felt they were slightly better quality so they kept them closer so they keep an eye on them they had some interesting pieces I didn't see any particularly high-end ones but they were in nice shape otherwise I'm not sure how vintage they are those who are totally into purses will definitely know and they can judge on their own. They have some greeting cards and so on. They're not found in too many places. Uh, this is the other jewelry showcase. A wooden iron ring board. They're always nice to have. They work as a table very nicely. And it, Typically, they have some adjustment to their height. Not a lot, but there is some usually. They had this other case which had. Uh, and while you saw a watch there, so. Gives you an idea what kind of things they had in the other one. Then they have costume jewelry just out. Stuffies of various types. I think those were the change rooms. Sorry about the wavering. That has to do with the stabilizing software that I use after the fact. Because the camera itself does not. It's a spy camera. So I, I get away with doing some of these videos a little more easily. camera is in my hand, but it's sold as a spy camera. It's very petite, about the size of a, a D 
digit on one hand. Yes, the unmentionables are here as well. Looked like a pretty good selection of shoes. And they have fabrics and sheets. Some knitting and crochet supplies. And other crafting supplies as well. Numerous items from uh, some joke shop who would use a comb as a switchblade, unless their thought is that somebody's going to actually convert it to a switchblade. Even then, it probably wouldn't be very good. Probably even more dangerous than a proper switchblade. Yes, they had some. Uh, some clothing not like the place is filled with clothing some places are almost all clothing and very little of the hard goods this was like maybe a third of the store is the uh, the clothing end of it there was some men's not a huge amount but then there wasn't a huge amount of anything there were a couple of uh, Hawaiian shirts, as I remember. We'll be seeing those in a bit. And there's some comforters and blankets. And quilts. And of course, books. And that was a um, dressmaking mat for cutting. Here's some crochet quilts on a stand. I don't think the stand was for sale. Here's some more coats. These are the heavier ones. The earlier ones were lighter. Pants and slacks, hats. well uh, some of the women's outfits there's typically more of the women's than men's a bit of hardware and uh, barbecue equipment Not a huge amount, but hey, you never know what they're going to have at any time you go visit, because they are based on donations that are brought in. Some, looks like some vintage items there. Baskets, now they're always interesting. They can be nice pieces of decor if you do them well. Cookware. Day-to-day -day kind of supplementary pieces. There were some sets of dishes. Were they complete? I don't know. But there's certainly a stack of plates and bowls that, that you can make make into uh, something that'll work for you. Might even be cheaper than buying disposable and just redonate them again afterwards. If you got some large party, if the odd one breaks, it's not a big loss. And here's the other half. They've got a couple of sewing machines in here, some other larger pieces of furniture, exercise equipment. 
There's the second sewing machine. The overstuffed sofas that they're great if you've got one of the older buildings where you got more room, but a lot of the new construction, well, put one in and you've used up an entire living room. In the past, it would have been a small piece in a corner. Depends on the era of the house was built in. Very old houses weren't as big of rooms either. Here's the artwork that's just stacked. And some electronics and electrical. The sun was so bright that day. And the room was not particularly bright. So the book area, I think a bunch of magazines and children's books were, were pretty heavily there. So yeah, they cover a lot of stuff. That's why this video is not as short as some of the others. There's a lot to see and it's arranged in such a way that it wasn't particularly going to um, lend itself to being straightforward to just walk in up and down aisles. Yes, it's got aisles go up and down, but the way it loops around and where some people were working, some customers were there, so kind of go back and forth. There's a better view of the shoes. Like I said, they had an interesting selection of them. Nothing that I needed in particular. I don't generally do a lot of shoes, but I have picked up the odd shoe for myself. I wasn't looking for any this time. As I said, this is a closer view of the shoes, some of the clothing. for the potential of finding a Hawaiian shirt. Which I did find some shirts. This was... Well, I looked at it. one of the Hawaiian shirts. Not, it's of the style, it's not made in Hawaii, if I got it right. It was $7.99 at the time. Not the lowest, not the highest. It was an okay price. It's nice to lounge around in, knock about. another one it's a little more flamboyant I think the prices were the same typically that's how they do it in thrift stores although I've seen some anomalies as well I probably was looking at shorts not that I need it anymore and then we had some of the glassware I grabbed pictures for uh, Westwood Avenue, so she could see. They're a bit on the higher end of, uh, of the prices, but it can vary. These were often produced a bit after the depression glass era. These are depression glass. Um, she, she felt the price on that one and 
was it may not be bad, but she already had enough of that. Now this I thought was really bizarre. Yeah, it's a cooler. It's okay. It's vintage. Vintage doesn't necessarily make it highly valuable. And it, 50 bucks may be okay for a cooler, but they're comparing it to an Etsy price of $220 or an eBay price of $220. I think somebody's just trying to see what they can get on eBay. And that doesn't make it of that value. If it actually sold regularly on eBay for that kind of money, fine, I'd accept it, but I have my doubts. And here's the address, uh, phone number, contact information if you need it. It's uh, not right in the main street. No, it's not. It's along the railway line. And here's the bit of a story on who they are and their mission and what they do. It's a nice little document. That's the one I picked up earlier on. So they have a lot of different programs and uh, a lot of different ways that you can help and they can help. And they collect, and they d are funded by a bunch of different places, including the store.